Incontinence, the loss of bladder control, affects about 25 million Americans. But you don't hear much about it. While 55% of women in their 80s have the problem, nearly 30% of women in their 30s experience some loss of bladder control at least once a month. Altogether, approximately 50% of American women have experienced incontinence. That adds up to $26 billion a year in direct costs and lost productivity. Now, there are several different types of incontinence, with the most common being stress incontinence. This is urine leakage when any physical pressure is placed on the bladder, such as sneezing, coughing, or exercising. The majority of incontinence conditions can be improved or cured with treatment. But in order to get treatment, you have to take that first step, talk openly and honestly with your healthcare professional. Why is incontinence so common in women? Well, let's first take a step back and talk about the bladder. As with the heart, the bladder is a hollow organ constructed of muscles designed to propel fluid forward. This fluid, urine, is brought from the kidneys to the bladder via two tubes called ureters. The amount of urine carried depends on your fluid intake. The bladder is a sophisticated organ. It's expected, on the one hand, to be able to relax enough to serve as an adequate reservoir for urine collection, while on the other hand, it also must be able to contract in order to efficiently empty when it's supposed to. If it doesn't relax completely, it can only hold small amounts of urine, and frequent urination is the result. If it doesn't contract completely, the bladder fails to release all of the urine that it's holding. This is a problem because with less emptying, there is less room for more urine that arrives from above. And once again, frequent urination is the result. To make matters worse, when the bladder does not empty completely, the stagnant urine is more likely to become infected. Infection means that the bladder wall is going to be irritable and less likely to relax to be able to hold an adequate amount of urine. All of this relaxing and contracting must be done in conjunction with the voluntarily controlled sphincter muscle that surrounds the urethra, the tube that empties the bladder. The sphincter muscle must relax as the bladder muscle contracts in order for the urine to flow easily outward. When the sphincter muscle contracts, it squeezes the urethral tube and prevents urine flow. Basically, women are more susceptible to incontinence because of their anatomy. A woman's urethral tube is much shorter than a man's, so it offers less resistance to outflow when the bladder muscle contracts. Also in women, the urethra sits on the upper wall of the vagina, and it's relatively easy for bacteria in the vagina to find their way up the urethra and into the bladder where they can cause a urinary tract infection. The bladder, urethra, and sphincter muscle are all directly connected with the woman's uterus, vagina, and pelvic musculature. So women who deliver babies vaginally have an increased risk of incontinence, around 17% compared to non-childbearing women. How does that happen? Well, vaginal delivery can stretch pelvic muscles, allowing abdominal organs and the bladder to push downward. This causes the already short urethra to telescope upon itself and becomes shorter still, offering even less resistance to urine flow. In addition, in some births, the urinary sphincter muscle and the urethra can be traumatized. In the same way, Weight can have a similar effect on the urinary system as childbirth. In one study, women with a body mass index of greater than 30 were 139% more likely to be incontinent than those with normal weight ranges. Also, any metabolic conditions like diabetes or depression or neurological degenerative diseases like multiple sclerosis can injure the nerves of the bladder and urethra and increase the risk of incontinence. Now, as you might expect, problems with incontinence increase as a woman ages. In the late years, it can become a serious enough management problem to trip a woman from independence to dependency. In fact, half of the nursing home patients are incontinent, and dependency 
doesn't come cheap. Adding a single month of independence and health to America's senior population would save the country $5 billion. With a 10% decrease in hospitalization and institutionalization, $50 billion in savings per year would accrue. In her lifetime, a woman's bladder will be asked to relax and contract with perfection 300,000 to 400,000 times. So what to do if you're a woman? First, as a woman, understand that bladder care is essential. If you have pain, frequency, or leakage, don't suffer in silence. Be evaluated thoroughly. Second, for caregivers, routine questioning and screening for incontinence in older women is crucial, especially among those who have had children or hysterectomies, are depressed or overweight, or are diabetic or have neurological problems. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.